I improve the car or else. Now, some people say improve the car or you will get fired. But net net at the end of the day, we always have these doom and gloom stories about Elon. But today we're going to be actually diving into one of these videos. Tesla just solved the 4680 battery problem. And that's because we push innovation, baby. But let's hop straight into the video. Much respect and fair use. Shout out to the Tesla space. And we're going to actually roll into the video. Improve that we just solved of the 4680 battery problem. Now is an example of how effective Elon Musk can be when he gets mad. Earlier this year, Musk gave his 4680 battery team an ultimatum. Fix the problems and cut the costs or the entire 4680 program will be shut down. This is how Tesla's battery team responded. Now show me proof, right? Like show me proof he said that. People be just making now claims. People just be making claims. I don't know if Elon said that. Stop the cat. Show me the text message. Or else you'll get fired. Like, come on, guys. Over exaggerating. Through in Tesla's 4680 battery manufacturing that has been hinted at for a while now. We knew that the company was working hard and making progress on cell production volume while at the same time struggling with long-standing complications that prevented the 4680 from living up to the expectations set out by Tesla at their 2022 Battery Day event. But we also knew that change was coming. When Tesla began their first wave of corporate layoffs earlier this year, one of the biggest surprises was the departure of Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy, Drew Beglino. This wasn't just another Tesla executive, this was Elon's right-hand man, a key player in all of the company's major events and milestones. This was a pretty clear indication that a major change in direction was required for Tesla's battery team. Drew's departure was reportedly followed up by Elon Musk issuing a stern ultimatum to his remaining staff. Either do allegedly do the impossible or what? Do the impossible or meet the same fate as the supercharging division. See, nobody said that. Nobody said that. Come on, cut it out. It's amazing what people can accomplish when you start threatening them. Now, just three short months later, Tesla is saying that they have produced 50% more 4680 cells in Q2 than they did in Q1, while at the same time... 50% more. So, shout out to efficiency. And what were the people doing? Normies. What were the people doing prior to that? Right? Packing sand, sitting up there on Google and YouTube and actual Facebook and Instagram. But as soon as I say, hey, look, man, y'all better catch up or get lost or else. And this is allegedly... Now people all of a sudden become 50% effective. Man, get up out of here. But as you can see, the job got done. Shout out to Elon. I'm reducing their cost of goods sold by a significant margin. At the time of this update, Tesla was producing enough 4680 cells to build more than 1,400 Cybertrucks per week, which works out to roughly about 100 million batteries in a year at that rate. This demonstrates that the production ramp is still very much in progress. They are not slowing down yet, and even more importantly, they write that in July, the company began testing a prototype Cybertruck with in-house produced dry cathode 4680 cells. Many years ago in the fall- Dry cathode. Now, I'm really excited about that. 4680 cells we're producing. And remember I told you guys that we're always doing something that nobody else is doing. Let's continue. Of 2020, Tesla held a big event called Battery Day, and they showed off a fancy new battery cell design called the 4680. Not only was it much bigger and more powerful than the average cylindrical cell. And see, look what we were using before. Come on, Panasonic too. So again, vertical integration at its finest. It came with a promise from Tesla that their battery innovations would lower the cost per kilowatt hour of energy in their vehicles by 56%. And we all- 56%. So now making the product more effective and efficient and then also lowering cost. Very interesting. We'll know that the battery is the most expensive part of an electric car, so this could easily pave the way for Tesla vehicles that were much cheaper without having to sacrifice performance or could achieve much higher performance without having to crank up the price. See, that's kind of like your house. The most expensive part is your interest payments. So imagine if they told you they were going to take you from a 7% interest rate down to about 2 Let's say 50%, right? So let's say down to 3.5. Would you be happy now? Of course you would. That's the most expensive part that you pay considering your mortgage or your house overall. So if I could reduce that by 350 basis points, then I'm winning. And the same thing goes for our products, okay? Trying to translate that into this company called Tesla. One of the key reasons that the 4680 battery never lived up to expectations was in the manufacturing process, or specifically the dry battery electrode process. It's a technology that Tesla acquired in a buyout of a company called Maxwell back in- Now pay attention. We bought out a good company in a process, but pay attention closely. In 2019, and if successful, it would drastically reduce the size and cost of a battery production line 
while also increasing the speed and volume of production. The inside of a cylindrical battery cell is essentially just long metal ribbons that are rolled up tight and placed inside a metal can. One ribbon for the positive side and one for the negative side. When you make a battery using the standard wet process, you add a bunch of liquid solvents to the ingredients to melt them together and roll everything out into a flat ribbon. Then you need to dry them back out again. This wetting and drying is time-consuming, energy-intensive, and adds the complication of dealing with a bunch of toxic chemicals and off-gassing. Now, if you could make a dry battery, then you'd eliminate all of that stuff from the manufacturing process. This proved to be... And if you eliminate that, what do you save on? Time and energy. As he said earlier, it took a lot of energy and time. You see how that works? a lot more complicated than Tesla had first believed. They did figure out how to make half of the battery in a dry process, the anode or negative side of the battery, which is good, but this was already the easier and cheaper side of the battery to manufacture. It's mostly just a sheet of copper foil with graphite on top and a bit of silicon mixed in. But the much more complex and expensive cathode or positive side was more resistant to dry manufacturing. This is where all of the aluminum, nickel, manganese, and cobalt resides in the battery. Elon said in the past that dry cathode material was proving to be too hard for the machines to process, and it was damaging the metal rollers. Battery cathodes have to go through a process called calendaring. It's basically just compressing the powdered material down to a particular thickness. The cathode goes through rollers, where it's pressed out flat like pasta dough. And now watch this. Watch what happened. Hard that it started making dents in those rollers. Every time one of these machines would get damaged, it would take about 45 days for replacement parts to arrive and repairs to be completed. So... That's so 45 days for the parts to arrive and repairs to be completed, that's a loss of time. That's messed up, right? That would clog up the system. So how do we actually solve for this? Well, we're Tesla. Is a lot of downtime. We actually have this photo from Joe Tetmeyer that shows a close-up view of a damaged cathode roller. This is a hardened steel drum that's been chrome-plated to make a perfectly smooth surface on the exterior. We can see that the abrasion from the dry cathode material has separated the chrome plating from the roller, making it completely useless. From what we've been able to gather from insider reports, it took an upgrade to more expensive production equipment and a change in the manufacturing procedure for Tesla to finally overcome this costly hurdle. So we found a way to overcome the costly hurdle of the manufacturing process that actually cost us time and energy and also money. And now, according to what Tesla just released, after five years of blood and sweat, that dry cathode problem has finally been solved. Cybertruck lead engineer Lars Moravai said that Tesla has built the first validation Cybertruck with the dry cathode process. It's this particular truck captured by Joe Tetmeyer. It's been totally blacked out, and very importantly, Lars said that the battery cathodes in this truck were made on mass production equipment. These are so mass production, not prototype equipment. He's going to say that right here. Not special prototypes. The machines that made these batteries are ready and waiting to make a hundred million more just like that. So that's good, right? See, we had a problem and we found a way to actually fix the problem. Again, this is why we're cutting edge over there at Tesla. This means that by the end of 2024, all Cybertrucks will be produced with 100% dry process 4680 cells. And this change in manufacturing should allow the 4680 production volume to ramp up even faster than it is right now, making enough cells to build as many Cybertrucks as Giga Texas can handle. Of course, that's given the validation Cybertruck meets all of the real world expectations that it's being put through right now. And it's going to have to make it through those. OK, so not too sure yet. All right. We haven't been able to be like, oh, wow, it's congratulations. We can't dance quite yet because we have to put it through the test. We have to put it through the trial and error. Right. So, again, it's still on hold. But see, this is the great innovation that happens all the time after five years, blood, sweat and tears. So a lot of times people see innovation come from Tesla or any other company. And they're like, oh, my gosh, it came out of nowhere. Like, no, this was five years in the making. And quote unquote, people were threatened. Oh my gosh, we're always coming up with excuses. All right. So what, what is people in the comments saying? If I watch one more Tesla video telling me they solved a problem, but not saying a thing about how I'm going to banish them from my feed. Well, you want to know how you want to know their IP? Tell me their IP and how they solved the problem. Normies, right? Once you get in the comment section, it kind of goes crazy. Still far short of Elon's stretch goal of 500 mile range and a 40K price point. Yeah, you got to give it some time. See, a lot of people actually just think it's like things are always working like it's an iPhone. Guys, this is not the iPhone 15 and 16. This is a whole car. It's like thousands upon thousands of pieces. 
Sometimes the stick works better than the carrot. Exactly. A lot of times the stick works better than the carrot. But those are allegations. We don't know what Elon said to his team that actually made them innovate. They're always pushing towards innovation. And I haven't heard that much of complaining coming from Tesla employees. Always hear it from people that are on the Internet. So, again, thank you, Tesla. And thank you from Tesla. What was it called? Tesla Space for actually providing the video fair use. Go ahead and check those guys out. But again, the innovation is always here. We're always approving the company. And hopefully we solve this 4680 problem or at least made it more effective and efficient. And much respects to the team that actually did the innovation for five years in the making. Y'all lost a big leader and still continue to push forward and innovate. See, that's the miracle about Tesla, right? Even if the top dog leaves, somebody who is very important, if he leaves, the other people rise up pick up and continue to move forward and continue the innovation. It's a culture, baby. There's no other culture like that here, okay? If you go down to old Twitter or if you go down to MySpace or Facebook, I don't know if MySpace is still around, but if you go to a lot of these companies, a lot of people are just packing sand. They're just like by the cooler like, so how was your weekend? Oh, it was pretty nice. I mean, did you taste this new coffee? I know, new espresso machine. It's just the best. What do you have going on for today? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to take a nap, going to do some yoga, and then I have a meeting at about 1 p.m. that I'm going to take. I'm going to cut it short. It's the same guy as usual. And then I'm going to be done for the day. It's only basically one meeting. And I could have did this virtually, but, you know, we have to come into work. Yeah, I understand it. And, then you know, whatever, you know, I mean, work-life balance. YOLO, that's what it's all about. Not at Tesla. We are out here pushing, innovating, and if you don't want to innovate, then your contract can be terminated. So everyone hates Tesla because of that. Normies especially. Shout-outs to the normies. Shout-outs to the NPCs. And like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys can get a notification and alert when a new video comes out. And we're pumping these videos out, and we're analyzing and combing through the finer details so we can be smarter than the rest. Everyone hates Tesla. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.